sure. Okay. First question, what is the nature of the soul? Um, the nature of the soul, I think it, um, I got it out of the APA um, psychology dictionary. It's non-physical, it's responsible for the functions of the mind and individual personality, and it's thought to live on after the death of the physical body. Um, and then, so in my words, I think it's just that little voice that we all get inside of our head telling us what is right and wrong. Um, so is it different and what is the difference? I do think that the soul and the mind are different, but they um, can't work without each other. Um, the mind more involves like what we think, and then our soul more involves um, how we feel. So what is human nature at birth? Um, so I kind of agree with the empirical theory that John Locke believed in as well, um, talking about humans being a blank paper, and that whatever we experience is kind of what we come to know. So I think that um, at birth, we're, we are that blank paper, and we're innocent. And then through our lives, um, through what we experience, that's how we come to know things. So like I said, environment plays a big role on development of a person. Um, just a personal example of that, I was raised by my dad, and I think that if I was raised by my mom as well, that I would probably be a completely different person. So I think that who we are is based off of our environment. Um, what is the connection or relationship between the physical um, brain, nervous system, and the soul or the mind? So my understanding was the mind is just like, it's just like a thing. The mind is just the brain. It's made of certain things. Or the mind is in the brain, sorry. The brain is just the thing, it um, has certain parts of it, and then the mind is what makes the brain function. Um, the nervous system sends signals to our body, making it react the way that it does in certain situations, and the soul deals more with our personality, as I said earlier. Um, I don't think that the nervous system and the soul really correlate too much, but maybe if your nervous system had experienced something tragic or something like that, it could you know, affect your soul. So I think that might be a relation. Um, so what is the nature of human intelligence? How does it function? How is it best measured? Um, so um, human intelligence is reasoning, problem solving, and learning. Um, some, what was his name? Binet, Binet or something like that? Binet. Binet. He believed that it was best measured through like IQ testing and stuff like that. Um, so I got a couple of these IQ tests that I would like you guys to do. And you just have to um, basically look at the how they are and then pick which one of these you think would go next. So I'll give you like a minute to do that. You can write it down on your paper. There's three of them, so. <laughs> <laughs> what do we do? Write it down. <laughs> Why would write the whole thing? No, no, just like what what's number? the answer? Oh, what yeah, what's the answer? So what number? You think what would come next? So oh, question sure. A is the and top. There's three part. of them, so and then I'll give the answers at the end. Is three answers or? There's, there's three, three different questions. questions. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> so is everyone got some? Okay. Is everyone got it? Got it? 
Okay, so a lot of people um, think that our intelligence is based off of testing, such as like IQ testing or like ACT testing. I personally disagree. Um, I think that we can't, um, here's the answer, by the way. I, I disagree. I think that there's no best way to measure human intelligence. Um, so how many got three out of three right? I used to use it. That's oh, I did. You did? I did. You only got two out of three. Are you lying? I got one. I did too. Did what do we get? Bonus points? Oh, okay. Uh, so good you got, if you only got one, you got to go to special ed. <laughs> <laughs> so well, what's the purpose of it? Yeah. A lot of people say that things like that is what um, measures our intelligence. I personally disagree. Because I got like one out of three rights. <laughs> but, um, Can you go back to show us number, number C? Two, yeah, B. That one's B. No, uh, show us the last one. Y'all can't wait till the presentation. That one was <laughs> no, I want to see. <laughs> I don't see how. That one goes this way. Okay, I understand that one. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. I, mean, I think I understand. It's good. It's good. I didn't see that. But yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> mental illness, I think that is. Um, when a person is not all there mentally and something is wrong with their brain that makes them act differently. Um, so the last question, what are the main functions and purposes of psychology and psychological treatment? Um, psychology, I think, is the main function of it is to learn more about our behaviors. Um, and then psychological treatment, I think um, the purpose of that is to help um, anyone and everyone to get their behavior to what is more socially accepted. Um, okay, so I couldn't really find a scripture that really tied in with my answers, so I just picked a scripture that I thought was good. <laughs> so Isaiah 40, 31 um, says, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Somebody else ask a question first, so I will take your question. Go ahead. Um, anyone, any of you said that um, you think that you think that um, the mind, I think you said the mind's like the little voice that we hear in our heads, whatever. Or I think that's what you said, but well, that was answering my question, so never mind. I said the the soul. The soul. Was, the okay. soul was the the little voice that we hear. Okay. So it's a conscience? Yeah. Um, can you go back to the slide about mental illness? I think it's number four. No, that's, that, yeah, what is mental illness? Uh, what does not all there mentally mean? I mean, it could be qualified as, like, different, you know, just like a lot of people, just whatever is not. So if we're different, I'm mentally ill? What? So if I'm different, I'm mentally ill? I think that a lot of times we try and like classify that as mentally ill, you know what I mean? Like there's so many things that are classified as mentally ill nowadays. Didn't they try to put like OCD in the DSM, whatever it's called? It's in there. Oh, it's in there? Oh, yeah, OCD. But see, in the DSM, the DSM requires that it's it's causing you a problem as well, or, yeah, it's causing you a problem of functioning. So being different is not mental illness in, in that, <coughs> according to DSM. It's it's just that it's got a, one of the criteria is it's got to cause a disruption in the person's life. So you could be really different, eccentric, and as long as you can function, it's not really an illness according to the DSM. But it, you're right, for one thing, it's all about categorizing people. So we all, everybody, it's kind of a, it's how we decide what is different enough to be a mental illness. And a lot of times it's up to the person too. If they don't like it, it's disruptive to them. Or if someone else is causing them to lose their job or whatever, so. Anybody else? All right.
Thank you.